Hello and welcome to lesson 27 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be looking at something called logarithms. Last lesson we looked at exponential functions. Logarithms are the process we need to be able to solve exponential equations. So we're going to start that process of understanding what a logarithm is and how to use them. Okay? So firstly, before we answer that question that's there, what is a logarithm? Okay, let's take this, this um, expression 2 to the power of 5 and what it equals, 32, and let's discuss it. This entire expression, 2 to the power of 5, is a power expression. Okay, 2 to the power of 5, this entire thing is known as a power expression. Okay. The 5 itself is known as the index or exponent, okay? So that is an index or an exponent. Some people talk about it being a power, but um, purists say the entire expression is called a power expression, okay? The, the 5 itself is an index or an exponent. And the 2 is the base Okay, so this is the base of the power expression. Okay, so that's the base of our power. And it's, you know, that seems quite clear. It's at the base of the power. Okay, so 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32. So where do logarithms come in? Well, logarithms are a way of rewriting this whole expression in order to find the power. Let's say we didn't know what what index we needed there in that power expression, which would give us 32. So two to the power of what gives us 32? And we wanted a way of using our two and our 32 and discovering the power that was needed, okay? So this entire expression can be written in a different form, in the following form. The log to base two of 32 is equal to what? So this expression, log base 2 of 32, is saying, okay, I want the logarithm, okay? The logarithm is actually the power, okay? So that really is a logarithm. So I want the logarithm, so I want the power, I want the ex exponent, the index, that I would put the base 2 to to get an answer of 32. So this expression here is just asking for the index that I would have to put 2 to to get 32. And I know that 2 to the power of 5 gives me 32. So the answer to that is 5. So a logarithm is really just an index or a power or an exponent. It's asking what power do I need to put the base and the base is always the number just below the logarithm. On your calculator, there's a button, on most calculators that is, which just says log. There's another button which says log with a little, little square underneath it and then another square. So it looks like this, log, square, and then another value. That enables you to, to input a base into that little square below the subscript and then the answer there. So here I could put log and then I put 2 in there and I put 32 there. That would, and then if I press equals, it would give me 5. So that is what a logarithm is. It's a way of finding the power if we didn't know the power of an expression. Okay, so it's it's really, it's the inverse of exponentials. Exponentials and logarithms are the inverse, just like squaring, square rooting are kind of the inverse. I won't go into, into too much detail. So logarithms and exponentials are inverse of each other. And that, this allows us now to solve questions where the unknown is in the power. We wouldn't have been able to do that before. But let's just practice this, this knowledge of what a logarithm is. So without a calculator, we're going to try and do some logarithms. So the first one here, evaluate the following logarithms. First one, log base 7 of 49. Have a think about that. That's asking me, what power do I need to put 
the base 7 to to get an answer of 49. Hopefully you already know that 7 squared is 49. So log base 7 of 49 is just going to be 2 because 7 to the power of 2 is 49. So this logarithmic expression is asking me what power do I put two, but 7 to to get 49? And that answer is 2. Okay, the next one. Log base 2 of 1 eighth. This one is asking me what power do I put 2 to to get an eighth? So I'm taking a little bit more thought. 2 to the power of what gives me 1 over 8? Well, I know 2 to the power of 3 gives me 8. So 2 to the power of minus 3 will give me 1 over 2 cubed, or 1 over 8. So log base 2 of an eighth is minus 3. That is the exponent needed for 2 to get 1 eighth. Okay, now, based on those, have a go at these three on the right. Pause the video, have a go. With the last one, there is no base here. When there is no base, you have to assume the base is 10. Because mathematicians are lazy, when there is no base, it is the default base, and our number system is based on the number 10. Each column in our decimal number system is 10 times as big as the previous column. It goes the ones, then the tens, then the hundreds, then the thousands, then the tens of thousands, etc. And the reason for that is just because we probably, most certainly because we have, we count in multiples of 10 because we have 10 things and thumbs. Okay, that is the reason. A much better base would have been base 12, but that's a whole nother story. We're stuck with base 10 as it is. So if that there is default base 10, pause it and have a go at these three answers and I'll go through the answers. Okay, so the first one, log base 11 of 121. Hopefully you know that 11 squared is 121, so the answer to that is 2. Log base 2 of root 2, well hopefully you know that 2 to the power of a half is root 2. 2 to the power of a half means square rooting that value, so this would be just a half. And log of a thousand means log base 10 of a thousand, really. And since I know that 10 cubed is a thousand, then I know log of a thousand is just 3. And you can check all of those with your calculator. With the last one, part C, there should be a button in your calculator which just says log. And if you just do log a thousand, it'll give you three because that is defaulting to base 10. Okay, so that's what a logarithm is and how to evaluate it with and without a calculator. Now let's play around with logarithms. Now, I've told you that logarithms are the inverse of powers. Okay, so just like um, there are laws of indices, so there are laws of logarithms. Okay, and I'm going to give you the three laws of logarithms that you are going to need for the next part. So we're building up your knowledge of logarithms so that you can answer, solve equations based on exponential functions, which will be a future lesson. But today we're just focusing on practicing with logs. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove the first log law and then I'm going to just write the other two. You can find the proof yourself proof yourselves for the other two. So the first log law, okay. I'm going to just say that log base a of x is equal to m, okay? So let's just, let, let m be a way of rewriting log base a of x. And log base a of y is n, okay? Let's just say that that's true. So therefore, x will equal a to the power of m. If log base a of x is m, it means what power of a gives me x? m is the power. So a to the power of m is x. And similarly, if log base a of y is n, then a to the power of n equals y, based on our knowledge of lo what, how logarithms work. So these can be rewritten as these expressions here. So if this is true, if the top thing's true, then that is true. They are the same thing written in a different way. Okay, 
So we have those two, two, two statements. So if we multiplied x and y together, we would get a to the m multiplied by a to the n, because x is equal to a to the m, y is equal to a to the m. And by our laws of indices, we know that's a to the power of m plus n. So x times y is a to the power of m plus n. Hence, the log base a of xy is equal to the log base a of the same value of xy, which is a to the power of m plus n. And since we know that log base a of something is saying, what power of a do I need to get this thing? Well, what power of a do I need to get a to the power of m plus n? The power is m plus n. It's like saying, what power do I need 10 to go to to get 10 to the power of 7? Well, log base 10 of 10 to the power of 7 is just 7 because what power do I need 10 to go to to get 10 to the power of 7? Well, it says it there. It's 7. So that's the same thing here. Now, I know that m can be replaced with log base a of x. That's from the very first statement. And I know that n can be replaced with log base a of y. And that there is the first log law, that this is equivalent to this. The logarithm of xy is equal to the logarithm of x plus the logarithm of y. It's sort of the, in, it, it is the inverse of the index law where if you multiply them, you add the indices. Here, if you add two logarithms together, you multiply the part inside the functions. Okay, so let's write down the log, laws of logarithms that we are going to use next. The first one is the one we've just said, but I'm gonna write them without bases. The, as long as the base is the same, these will hold true. Log of A, plus log of b is equal to log of a b. Second one, the log of a minus the log of b is equal to, now think, remember, when we divide, we subtract powers here. So if we subtract, we divide. So log of a over b. And lastly, n times the logarithm of a is equal to the logarithm of a to the power of n. I could have put a little base c for each of these. As long as the base is correct, you can, you can as long as the base is the same, you can simplify them together. The lit base needs to be the same. You can't add a logarithm to base seven of something plus the logarithm to base 12 of something else and combine them using this law. The logs need to have the same base for each of them but I'm just gonna default and just say that using base 10, these are true. And so therefore using, as long as the base is consistent throughout, then you can use these laws, okay? Just like with the laws of indices, you can only multiply and then combine the powers if the base is the same. So seven to the power of 10 times seven to the power of one is seven to the power of 11. The base is always seven, so then it's consistent, therefore I can use that. So these three laws you need to memorize and you need to be able to use. So that's what we're gonna be do now is we're going to use these laws to simplify logarithms. So the first one that we're going to use. So here's a works example. Write the following as a single logarithm. Log of 12 minus log of three. Well, this is the subtraction law, which is the second law. Log A minus log B is log of A over B. So this is just log of 12 over three. So that is equal to log of four. So log of four is a simpler way of writing log 12 minus log three. I could evaluate log four on my calculator, but it would just give me a decimal. It would give me a value that you would put 10 to the power of that would give you four. But we're not going to do that because log four is exact and it's much better than a horrible never ending decimal. Second one, half log 16 plus three log two. 
Some of you might be tempted to immediately add them together, which means multiply the 16 by the 2, but you cannot since there is a number in front of both. You can only use log A plus log B is equal to log of AB if it is 1 log A plus 1 log B. Okay, so we need to use the third law, n log a, and rewrite that as log of a to the power of n. Here we've got half log 16. That, according to the third log law, is log of 16 to the power of a half. 3 log 2 is the same as log of 2 to the power of 3. That makes sense because 3 log 2 means, and another way of thinking of it, is 3 log 2s is log 2 plus log 2 plus log 2. Which is, according to the first log law, log of 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 cubed. So that's another way of thinking about it. This law is really just an extension of the first log law. Anyway, that's by the by. So log of 16 to the power of a half is the same as log of 4, because 16 to the power of a half is the root of 16, which is 4, plus log of 2 cubed, which is log of 8. And now I can combine them using the first log law. Log of 4 plus log of 8 is log of 4 times 8, so log of 32. So that there is then written together and simplified into one single logarithm. I want you to have a go at these two now. So write these two as single logarithms using your log laws. Pause it, have a go, and then I'll give you the answer. Okay, so the first one, it is just one log of something plus one log of something else. So you can just add them together, combine them using the first log law. So it becomes log of 7a times 2a, which is 14a squared. Second one, a third log of a thousand minus a half log 25 becomes log of a thousand to the power of a third minus log of 25 to the power of a half. And the first one, a thousand to the power of a third is 10. So that becomes log 10. 25 to the power of a half is five. So that becomes minus log five. And now we can combine them with the second log law which becomes log of 10 over 5, which is simply log of 2. And now we've written them as a single logarithm. Okay, well done if you got those right. What you should do now is practice this until the, the laws of logarithms and your understanding of what a logarithm is, is fluent, that you feel like it is something that will stay with you, that you won't just forget a day later. So exercise 12.2, so the second exercise in the Exponentials and Logarithms chapter from this textbook is a fantastic exercise which will practice and extend your knowledge until you become less of a novice. Okay, you won't become a master for many years yet, but you'll become less of a novice. So go away and enjoy, and I'll see you in the next lesson where we try and solve exponential functions using logarithms.